Here's a tree of life. At the bottom we have some animals and we try to guess which of those animals have got a common ancestor the shortest time ago. The answer is the bat and the whale, followed by those two and the fox, followed by the human, and we can keep on doing this and we end up with an absolutely stunningly beautiful mathematical representation of how closely connected these animals are. I wanted to do the same with numbers, to get a number tree. This is how it works. We're going to take an idea from Neil Sloan and his online encyclopedia of integer sequences. And the idea is the EKG sequence, and this is how it works. So we start off with the number two, and then we have to choose numbers that we haven't chosen before and share a common prime factor with the last number chosen. So here the last number chosen is two, which is the lowest number that has a common prime factor in common with two? Well, it's four. And the next one is six. What number is the lowest number that we haven't used yet that shares a common prime factor with six? The answer is three. Three and six share a common prime factor of three. What is the lowest number that we haven't used yet that shares a common prime factor with three? Nine. What's the lowest number that shares a common prime factor with 9, 12, and 8, and 10. What's the lowest number that we haven't used yet that shares a common prime factor with 10? 5. We drop down to 5, and then we're up to 15, and we keep on going. Your students should practice creating this sequence. Now, I'm going to stop at 27, and then I'm going to ask, is there any reason why we have to start at 2? Of course not. Let's experiment now. Let's start this EKG sequence at 3. What do we get? Well, it goes up to 6 and drops down to 2. And again, we come up with a unique sequence here. It doesn't look like this is replicating the terms of the two sequence. It looks like these are two quite different sequences. We can try it for starting with 4. And if we do that, we start off Oh, do you notice something? Yeah, this sequence seems to be kind of genetically linked to the two sequence because after only two terms, the sequences are identical. Let's try this for five. So five, ten, two, okay, and we just let it go. Now this looks different from anything we've seen so far. Aha! But did you see what happened there? Starting at 18, this sequence seems to be genetically linked to the number 3 sequence because after 18, those two sequences are identical. So we, we can start with any number that we want to and we can see what other numbers it, they're closest genetically linked to. So for example, 6 and 9 seem to be genetically linked to the 3 and 5. In fact, the 6 and 9 are even closer to the number 3 than the number 5 is. And the number 6 is even closer than that. Look at that. What about whenever you start with number 7? Well, this sequence looks entirely different until the last two terms. And then we start to get the repetition, starting at 24 and 26. What about the number 8? Well, the number 8 looks like it's repeating the 2 and 4 sequence after it it reaches 10. So we can actually make this beautiful, the, the same type of thing that we saw for the tree of life, we can make a tree of numbers to see which numbers are kind of genetically uh, more linked to each other. I just think this is beautiful and interesting for students. Um, so what I would do is I would get your students to each choose a different number and to trace its way back until they find somebody else in the classroom who has exactly the same sequence. So, for example, the people with the number 9 and the number 7, they would find that, they're, that after 20 steps of their sequence, they're doing the exact same work. How boring. Just get them together and get them to work together to go back even further and see, I wonder if the 248 group 
will ever meet the 9 and 7 group. Hmm, that's an interesting puzzle. To see the answer, uh, I've, I've done the numbers 2 through 20, and this is the beautiful uh, result. I'm kind of proud of this. This is like art, mathematical art. And so this is, this is something I, I, I'm really happy with. Look at that. Isn't that amazing to see that 15, 20, and 18 are their own little subgroup that are connected to the 2, 4, 8, 16? I think that this is, is just a great, rich way to give your students practice in finding uh, common prime factors between numbers. I, I find most work on this is, is trite and boring. I mean, why, why ask a question uh, that is small? Like, what uh, prime factor do the numbers 51 and uh, 85 share in common? Uh, this is not really interesting uh, compared to putting it in a context of a larger, beautiful problem like this one. Thank you.